two hours ago. It's really, it's past his bedtime. There you go. Sort of sweet, sweet. Oh, well, I mean, if he nods off, it's not a big deal. You know, if I fall asleep in the middle of a uh, business meeting, that's one thing. But if he crashes between breakfast and finger painting tomorrow, I'm sure he can make it up in summer school. No, Can't it's you? time for three things. It's time for a kiss just like this, a squeeze of you, please, and a hug. For my bug, and now Dad's turn. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, Mommy got it wrong. Because you know I, what did it is. I get it goes, wrong? You got it wrong. It goes, give me a <laughs> hug for my bug, a squeeze of you, please, mm. and the kiss for something like that. I messed up. <laughs> I blew it. Come on, Jamie. This you really wore him out. You're going to be asleep before your little head hits the pillow, aren't you? There you go. Oh, there we up go. to bed. Enjoy your evening. Say bye bye. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> So, what do you want to do? We could uh, spend the night channel surfing, comparing the late night talk show wars, or we could, or we could raise just... a refrigerator. We can stop pretending that we're one big happy family. I mean, maybe you can go on like nothing has changed, but I can't. What's wrong? What did I say? It's what you don't say. It's what you don't do. I mean, there's so much distance between us, we might as well be in, in different hemispheres. Am I missing something? I thought we had, we just had a, a great day together. It was a great day. It was a great day. Watching Jamie feed the animals in the petting zoo and walking around the pond and coming back here and fixing dinner together, it's, it was perfect. It was so picture perfect, I almost forgot. Forgot what? Forgot how hard it is for you to look me in the eye. How obviously it pains you to be alone with me. Since I told you that I almost slept with Edmund. Brooke, I told you, Edmund is not an issue in our home or in our marriage. You keep saying that. If that's true, why can't you sleep at night? I hear you get up. I hear you roam around this house till 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. I, I mean, you pick at your food. I... I I talk to you, you hear half of what I say. The only thing that we ever talk about anymore is work. We don't, we don't talk about us. You used to tell me everything. And now I don't know what you're thinking or what you're feeling or how to reach out to you. I'm afraid if I do that you'll pull away. I, I, I feel like I'm company in my own home. I'm sorry that I've made you feel that. I'm sorry, you know, I, that's what we say to each other anymore. I didn't... I didn't dredge this up so that you could apologize to me. I just want it out in the open. I just want to stop tiptoeing around each other. There's nothing that you've done, okay? I hurt you. Badly. But if you won't admit it, there is nothing that I can do to make it any better. Please don't make me feel bad that I was honest, please. Honesty is what our marriage is built on, and you have to be honest with me now. If you can't get beyond this, if I have, what I have done is betray You haven't everything. done anything, okay? Brooke, I told you, the problem isn't you, it never has been, it's me. The problem in our marriage is in me. Look, if Maria thinks that you still love Brooke, I mean, maybe it's perhaps it's because, because you made you her do. think so when she told you I proposed. No, I didn't. I really didn't. I wasn't trying to do that at all. She completely misunderstood. And I apologized. You remember when I came over and I congratulated you both? Yeah, I remember. It was so sincere. I mean, you were in and out of that door in a heartbeat. Dixie, the last time I saw anybody move that fast was Maria with food poisoning. I take it the news of our engagement displeased you? That is so not true. I am absolutely thrilled for you and Maria, both. Since when? Since I set the two of you up in the first place? You know, Brooke gave Maria her blessing. You gave her top ten reasons not to get married. I never said that I didn't think that she should marry you. Or any words to that effect? Why are you on my case? 
Because I consider you my friend, and so does Maria. And I would sleep a lot better at night knowing my friend isn't sandbagging me when she's alone with my fiance. Well, you don't think very much of me, do you? No, you're wrong. I do. Okay? That's why it, it, it eats me up to think that you don't trust me. So let me make you feel better, okay? I love Maria, okay? We're gonna get married. The two of us, when we walk down the aisle, it's just gonna be the two of us, me and Maria. Brooke is history. History? Let's play a little game, you know? I mean, let's just say, let's just say what if, okay? What if Brooke suddenly became available? It's not going to happen. Well, what, just, just, just say, let's just say, what if, okay? And you could walk down the aisle with, like, the woman of your dreams. Would it be Brooke, or would it be Maria? We're going to be married, and we're going to settle down and concentrate on being happy and raising a family. And Brooke? I... Brooke could be married, single, widowed, divorced. It doesn't matter, all right? We're through. Now, it's not a problem for me, so why is it bothering you so much? <laughs> it doesn't. Really. I, I know that you're not the kind of guy who would propose to Maria and not mean it. I mean, I'm sure you wouldn't just marry somebody on impulse and then live to regret it. No, I wouldn't. Pine Valley's had more than their share of that type of wedding this year. I'm not about to add to it. Speaking of which, have you spoken to Ted since he proposed to you? No, I haven't. I sort of thought it would be better to have a clean break. Are you holding up? Fine. Really. You know, I just, I really am very happy for you and Maria. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, I'm glad we cleared the air about this stuff. You know, I, um, I like you, you know? You're my, my friend. And I don't like leaning on you that hard. It's okay. You know, it's, sometimes it's very hard to tell who our friends are these days, you know? I mean, before, Tad ever came back, Brooke and I were very good friends, you know, and there's still a very good and big part of me that cares very much about what happens to her. So do I. But, you know, she seems to have made a happy life with Tad. Yeah, well, I hope she never regrets losing you. Why? Why do you think she should? You haven't done anything to me or to this marriage. This has been my fault. It's, it's, it's my fault. It's mine and Edmund's. Brooke. You're the best wife a man could ever hope for. You're the smartest woman I've ever met, and I don't have to go into what a terrific mother you are. One look at Jamie says it all. I mean, kids don't come any better than that because mothers don't come any better. Believe me, you are best. Thank you. What happened between you and Edmund only proves one thing, that you're human. There's nothing to be ashamed of in that. You know, I'm a little confused here because I thought that you were putting emotional distance between us because you felt that I had let you down. Here I am tripping over myself trying to find the right words to make you feel better. Maybe if you stop trying so hard, maybe if you just say what you have to say. You're my best friend. You're mine too. So tell me something. If we both feel that we're the best thing that's ever happened to each other in our lives, why haven't we made love since you came back from Napa? That's a tough question. And I'm afraid I don't have an easy answer. 
you said that the problem wasn't me, that it was you. That's right. It's the truth. I just don't know where to begin. Well, anywhere. Any, anything. Anything is better than, than this. You're scaring me. What is it? Is it something that you're afraid to tell me? I mean, is that why you can't sleep at night? Is, is it business? I mean, you're not sick, no, are you? No, so I'm tell fine. me, what is it? Just tell me. What is it? I'm driving you crazy. I'm sorry. Oh, don't! I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to come to me because you feel sorry for me. I could not bear that. Brooke. You should get the door. Ted. Looks like I showed up at a bad time. Uh, some decaf or maybe, maybe a cold I beer. For an answer to my question, I'll rephrase it. Is Brooke's marriage in trouble? Well, how would I know if her marriage is in trouble? You know, I mean, I certainly don't have a private pipeline in their home. That's how you made it sound just now. Look, it was just completely off the top of my head. You know, I'm just playing what if. Don't you ever play what if? Not with people's lives. Now, let's get back to the question of Brooke and Tad. Mommy, I woke up. Well, yes, you sure did. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Did you try counting sheep? Huh? Have a little warm milk. Sound good? Mm-hmm. Great. Okay. Edmund, would you, uh, would you watch Junior for me? Sure, right? sure. If he's not too choosy. You're not too choosy, pal, are you? Okay. okay. All right. I'll be right back. Come on, bud. Sit down. Listen, I'm sorry your mom and I woke you up. We were probably talking too loud, huh? I thought you were Ted. Oh, yeah? Yeah, well, you were probably wishing and hoping, too. Mm -hmm. You like Ted, don't you? Yeah, he promised to bring me an indoor basketball hoop. Yeah. Tell you what, why don't I bring it to you, okay? Because I don't think Ted's going to be coming around too much real soon. Well, he was just here today. He was? I thought your mom said that she hadn't seen him in a while. He was just here today, and they were kissing. 